And today we're going to do four great stocks that was in the news today. And they was in the news because today was a bloody red day in the stock market because of what Fed Chair Powell had to say. Take a look. The scope and speed of this downturn are without modern precedent, significantly worse than any recession since World War II. We are seeing a severe decline in economic activity and, in, and employment, and already the job gains of the last decade have been erased. Since the pandemic arrived in force just two months ago, more than 20 million people have lost their jobs. A Fed survey being released tomorrow reflects findings similar to many others. Among people who were working in February, almost 40% of those in households making less than $40,000 a year had lost a job in March. Damn. This reversal of economic fortune has caused a level of pain that is hard to capture in words as lives are upended amid great uncertainty about the future. Mm, 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 mm. So oh. there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. When that man dropped out and he said those things, the stock market was red all day except for a few choice stocks that all the blue chippers are saying you should hold on to. So number one, take a look at this. Uber, very inexpensive stock. They got an infusion of $50 million to buy protective equipment for all its drivers and to provide protective equipment for its passengers. So if you're someone who believes in buying and holding and you want to get something while it's low, this is Uber. And I always tick my marker for the last week. And over the last week, they have made 10% on what you would have invested last week. And they was in the green today. Check out Uber. And fellas, I'll let you guys talk about them each individually. I'm going to just run through them real quick. Next one we got on the ticket is Target. Target. Why was, Target. Why was they saying Target is a good stop to buy? Well, number one, they've gotten more foot traffic, but they've also fortified their online buying. People are buying from Target online and triple the rates they were back in the day. And their foot traffic has gone up double. And usually what that means is once we get back to a normal place <clears throat> in society, when you increase your traffic by that much, you literally have to insult the people for them to leave from shopping with you. So that's why Target is a good buy, but they're rather pricey. But as you can see in the last week, they returned you 3%. Next one, that's a good one to hold on to, Glasgow Smith Klein. Why do you want some Glasgow Smith Klein? They are in the runnings with the three predominant companies coming up with a worldwide vaccine. And they are very close along with the other company I mentioned on Monday. And people was just giving them money left and right because they released some news on just about how close they are. And then there are proofs they've gotten overseas. So if you want another long-term buy, Glasgow Smith Klein is a good one. And it's not that expensive. You got a 3% return on your money. Next and last, Datadog, if you've never heard of Datadog, they are similar to PayPal, meaning that they are a processing organization. They're now doing lending. They process money for a bunch of individuals and they are doing well just simply because they are doing well. And people have been looking for other avenues to exchange money besides the bank. And they're forecasting that they are gonna be overtake PayPal in the next year or so because more people are figuring out to do things online and this is a resource to use online. Fellas, any insight, anything you guys have to say about these stock picks or what the Fed chair had to say with those damning remarks about America's economy due to COVID-19? I give it to you first, Larry. Yeah, I think, I think it's one of these things where you know, you bring in a bunch of people that are at the very, at the very best, the most generous I can be are semi-competent. And mostly of them, most of them are probably incompetent when it comes to running, you know, a country. And so when you start talking about financial policy outside of creating policy inside your little corporation and your little corporation might be fairly large, but it's not the size and scale of, uh, of a national economy. And I think we're suffering as a consequence of that. And so I think really, I think really what it is, we're just going to have to deal with the bad, we're going to have to deal with the bad economy in in some respects. It may be fine for rich people, but as, as everyday 
working people, we're going to have to deal with the economy that we have until we get new leadership. And that's just the way it is. And, you know, some of those stock picks, I think they're great, but most people really can't afford to buy $115 stocks in Target or, you know, $43 a share stock. I mean, you think about that. I mean, you're trying to block, if you just try and buy a block of Claxel, you know, Claxel Smith, I mean, you're talking about, you know, you buy, try and buy a Glaxo Smith client, try and buy a, 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 a block of stock. That's, you know, that's, you're talking about $4,300 just for a hundred share block, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a lot of money. So, I mean, these are, these are great stocks with great, with, you know, they're all of them are going to be, you know, they all seem like they're going up. They're great. If you're looking at holding them for long term and collecting dividends, it's just, they're expensive. And a lot of people don't have the money right now. Or people are holding on to their money because they're unsure of what their future is going to look like through all of this. So I think this is one of those things that's unfortunate about all global crisis or even regional or, or national crisis. It's always a great opportunity financially for the wealthy, for people who have money. For everybody else, it's just another time that you have to hold your shekels and 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 hope that you have enough to get through it, you know? Okay. So... T stream, pass it to you. Yeah, man. The uh the report was a little bleak and grim. Wanted to sort of run in my room and jump up under my covers real quick because uh it was <laughs> like you know, we think, uh you know, we we live in a doom and gloom age right now. And, and it was really it, it's it's crazy because these are some of the things that, that you never think that you would be be living in. You you read stuff like this in a Dean Coons book or something, <laughs> but but here it is. Yeah. Is, is now our reality um man i just you know I, I my heart goes out to the to the middle class to, to the to the especially the lower middle class those who you know those who, who who you know making it by check to check and now they you know they you know they like what do i do you know what i'm saying and and the, those are I'm sure uh, regular conversations within the homes of many, many Americans right now, not actually knowing what the hell to do right now. And it's sort of, it's really, really crazy um, with the stocks, man. I, I, anytime you, anytime you have have something like that and it's, and it's going strong and you, and you are able, you know, it's, it's always wise to, uh, to get what you, get what you can, you know, when you can, but you also have to use, you know, also have to use some type of foresight, you know, to, to see if, you know, if this is, if this is trending right now because of the situation and will it continue to trend after this situation or will it plummet? Uh, so those are just some of those are just some of the, the normal questions that you would ask yourself when you, when you look in the, to pick any stocks anyway, especially when there's when there's things going on that could uh potentially affect whether a stock does well or you know or not but uh, you know get you something find you something even you know if even if it's if it's not on this i was surprised to see that uber got that little boost like that uh, that's a that is a lot that that is a that is a lot and uh that says something about that i'm not sure exactly who's who's over uber and what kind of financing and backing that that they have but whatever they got they they doing something right mm -hmm. so you know i think part of the go i was ahead. gonna say i think part of the thing with uber is is that you know in a lot of parts of the country and i'm not sure how it is for you out there lamont I know Detroit has a pretty robust, uh, you know, public transit system. Here in D.C., we have one of the one of the largest public transit systems with our metro system, and ridership is down like ninety something percent. And they don't expect that even as people start to go back to work, that it's going to pick up to the same degree where it was. That there's already there's already a lot of concern for people, you know, that are in dc some of the people that, that run dc are, are really worried because people that are coming from outside of the district from maryland and virginia that they're going to drive in the city's not equipped to handle all those people driving in 
but people are not going to want to sit on a on a metro train for an hour 30 minutes or 45 minutes i mean there's some days when those trains are so packed that you can't move you're holding on to the rail and you have people all up against you there's no way to social distance it and run that and run the public transportation like that so mm -hmm. i think uber is going to be one of those things where people start to turn to where they just simply say yeah I, it cost me a bit more but i can pay 15 dollars in uber home or and know that I, i'm in the car by myself or i can pay you know five dollars and hop on the metro and and possibly have covid by the time i get home to my kids and my and my wife mm -hmm. so, so whenever i do these stop picks for you all the questions t stream was asking you know why are they going up or going down that day um what's causing the trend why are they getting infusions or cash whenever i find these stops for you guys i answer those questions i tried to answer them today uber is making sure they double down on providing protective equipment for their drivers and for the riders in lieu of what T larry is saying about highly populated areas they're not going to be getting on metros and buses but also uber has been doing gangbusters in food delivery right. i didn't mention that in the beginning so right. they're not just banking on the people coming back they're banking on people entrusting their food deliveries to them, knowing that these drivers have masks, they've got gowns, they've got um, sanitation stuff all in the car. So they decided to give that investment of 50 million to put these in the driver's hands. And you can bank on that for at least the next three years and get you a double digit return on that. And with the other companies, the type of things that were said by the Fed chair didn't even bother them because they've seen such growth in other avenues of their business that had nothing to do with Corona. So I always do that homework and try to bring you guys a certifiable evidence and then check the history of how they've been trending before I make a stock recommendation. However, I continue to say when you buy individual company stocks, make sure you leverage it with ETFs. And the other thing to Larry's point about not being able to afford the high dollar stocks i'm also trying to make sure i find some that are under a hundred dollars start somewhere get one get two get one each month just get into this capitalistic system and just let that be a vessel of saving and it'll grow over time long term is how you win ladies and gentlemen long term is how you win yeah. you know I, i'll be honest with you i really i really think that following this you know this pandemic I really think that economists, you know, are going to start, um, they're really going to start uh, reevaluating how much influence the Dow has as an indicator of our economic health, because it doesn't make any sense that we are looking at potentially going as high as 25% unemployment and the Dow is still at 23,000. It doesn't but, make any sense. It, but, at this point, it really is not a true indicator of our economic health. What it is, is an indicator of the economic well-being of the 1%, and that's it. And, and but then, then you have to account for the S&P too, and you've got to account for the NASDAQ, but the thing that's been propping up the entire system has been technology stocks. Some of your most expensive stocks are the ABCs, your Googles, your Microsofts, your Amazon. These stocks are still running 2,000 two of more. And they've just been going up. And now you've got Zoom done jumped into the mix. WebEx is back up. WebEx was down for a little while. They're kind of a competitor to Zoom. Now they're sky high because right. people have been using the technology stocks and when you look at what was green today versus what was red, a lot of it has something to do with technology. Uber is a technology in essence, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, technically, it's just an app that brings people together via somebody's own car. And they're considered a technology stock. So, right. um, you, may, you know, you might have to start going by what is driving the future of economics. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's definitely technology. Yeah, and I think some of these, I think some of these stocks like Cisco will start going up because some of these companies that are dealing with that, ha like for instance, that use like you were talking about with Zoom, where they do the whole, uh, you know, meetings at home and all this stuff. I think some of these other companies like 
uh, you know, like Microsoft Meetings and Cisco. These are companies that have dealt with the with federal and state and local governments for a long time. And now they're going to be able to move in and 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 deal more with them as far as these distance meetings, you know, these remote meetings, because they already have all the security stuff in place. That was one of the issues that Zoom took a big hit on early on was they were they had issues with security and then passing data back and forth to Facebook, I think it was. Well, you don't have that when you start looking at Microsoft meetings and Cisco. These are these are companies that have already locked their systems down. Mm -hmm. and have secured government contracts and so everything's in place all they really have to do is scale up so i think some of those i think some of those stocks in those areas are probably going to be a i know that i know i know cisco's already been on a sort of a it's been going up but you know it's like anything they have a roller coaster ride a bit but i think they're going to be pretty strong they're i think they're at like 42 dollars now or something like that so 